is Kids 106, NASA, the Bahamas. It's time for your lane with Coach Trishanna. Yeah, it's time to empower, educate, and encourage your women to motivate you through whatever you've been going through. We can talk about it. We ain't passing no judgment. So don't be ashamed. It's all the same. Stay in your lane. Your lane. It's whatever your real life looks like. Stay in your lane. Come on, mark the dark and don't be ashamed. Hello, 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 and welcome everyone to Your Lane Talk Show with your coach, Trish Hanna. Happy Sunday. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. Uh, for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, Your Lane Talk Show was created to educate, encourage, and empower women of all ages. Now, we went missing last week, Sunday, and that's only because we decided to use Sunday before last talk show. Um, the show we hosted was with Pastor Dr. Cleo Williams of Life Changers Ministries International under the topic Matters of the Heart. And boy, did she go deep. Listen to me. People are still watching because I could see it from my, my Facebook page. People are still liking. People are still sharing. That's just how deep it was. And we were like, you know what? We don't need to do a show now. Um, last week, Sunday, we, well, the time she was here, we said we didn't have to do another show. We're just going to use that same show and play it for the, for the following Sunday. And it was phenomenal. It was so good. So good. And I give God thanks for Dr. Cleo Williams. Blessings, blessings. You know, we got to have a back, right? Okay. All right. So today's show. Today's show is a part two of the series Mental Health Check-In. Part one, we hosted two, I would say, everyday average ladies who shared their struggles of mental health and what they were doing to overcome. Because, you know, it's a process. So they were still sharing, okay, this is what I do. I go out for walks. Um, sometimes I just journal, whatever have you. That's their method. And of course, um, you can fi find both of those shows, the one with Matters of the Heart with Dr. Cleo Williams and Mental Health Check-In Part 1 um, on YouTube. Just go to Coach Trish Hanna uh, on YouTube and you'll find all of the past shows there. Please, when you do go, like and subscribe. Hey, I implore you to call a friend. And tell them to tune into Star 106.5 FM dial, especially if they're driving. That's something that they need to be tuning into and listening to um, today. And if they're at home, let them go to channel 976 on cable, or they can log on to Facebook on your name, like coaching Facebook page to watch us live. Those of you who are watching, of course, like I say, every Sunday, please share and tag people because they need to know we have a professional in the house today we have a professional that's in that's ready that's just energetic <laughs> <laughs> and he's ready to share um things that we need to know because we heard from the average women so now we're going to hear from the professional man today on mental health check-in part two and today's show this is episode 48 is brought to you by Airborne Freight and Cargo Services, John Shoe Store and Accessories, Your Lane Life Coaching, Family Medicine Center, Bahama Odds and Ends, and Emmanuel Medical Center. Now let's introduce our guests. But before we do, wait, let me just say my predictions. I didn't do that. My predictions of emotions today for this episode are, I think, 
90% serious aha moments. And I say 90% because that 5%, we're going to add that on. Because I had 95 initially until I met Dr. Knowles. Dr. Knowles said he is kind of humorous, so we say. So we'll see. He said he's down to earth. He likes to laugh and whatever and enjoy life. So we gave him 5% laughter. We give this show 5% laughter today. And then, um, so that's 90% serious aha moments, 5% laughter, and 5% teardrops. The teardrops today would be because, hey, I finally found some help. I finally found somebody who understands what I'm going through. I finally find some knowledge so that I can go ahead and pursue what I need to pursue in order for me to overcome what I feel as if I'm I'm having struggles with. Yeah? Yeah. So our guest, listen to me. When he came in the studio, I was trying to see if I could get a saw or something to try to open up the roof because his head is literally touching the roof, y'all. That's just how tall he is. Um, he is none other than Dr. Sean Leonardo Knowles. He is a physician at the Sunderland's Rehabilitation Center where he works on the substance abuse wards at a, as a registrar. He is also the co-chief executive officer and physician of Emmanuel Medical Center, where he practices general medicine, including medical health disorders. Born in Freeport, Grand Bahama, his maternal grandmother raised him and instilled in him the values of hard work and having faith in God. Furthermore, Dr. Knowles attended Temple Christian schools during his primary and junior high school years and obtained his senior high school education from St. Augustine's College. Oh, so we have a big red machine in the house today. Y'all know how y'all is. This is y'all is a different caliber people. Y'all the ones who like to brag and boast, but that's okay. We ain't talking about that today. All right. He later earned his Bachelor of Arts degree in biology with minors in chemistry and Spanish. That's right. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Um, See. What, what? Hold on, Lord. Let me get back to it. Um, what it is? I'll get back to that because I done gone. Um, in 1998, from St. John's University in Minnesota, Dr. Knowles obtained a Master of Science in Mathematics and Statistics from Youngstown State University in Ohio. He obtained his Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery from the University of the West Indies. He completed a Master of Science degree in Immunology of Infectious Disease at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. Dr. Knowles enjoys weightlifting, kickboxing, you can see that, traveling, watching thriller movies, ah, public speaking, socializing, and mentoring young men. He is married to the former Doretha Strawn Knowles now. The couple has one daughter, Layla, and Dr. Knowles is also an avid lover of dogs and is a dad to Winnie, a Belgian Malinois, and Molly, a Pitbull mixed breed. Just before I get Dr. Knowles to talk about what he came here for, I just want to know if Winnie is dating anyone right now. <laughs> because I have a Belgian Malinois. His name is Titan. He's four years old, and he's never met or been with any other woman. Oh, wow. <laughs> And so whenever we have an opportunity, we can see if we can get them to go on a little date. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. Welcome, Dr. Nose. Yes. Thank you so much for being a part yes. of our show, um, your Lane Talk Show today. How yes. are you? Thank you, Ryan. I'm wonderful. I'm so delighted feel? to be here. I feel great. I think give our thanks. It's been a wonderful day. And I'm Good. just so excited to be here to have this opportunity to share with our listening audience. Good. So let's get it started Good. whenever let's you're ready. Let's get it started. Let's get it started. So thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I was trying to remember my Spanish because I haven't done Spanish since high school. The only thing I remember from, from Dora the Explorer, but with my kids, <laughs> <laughs> was um, something habla espanol. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You speak Spanish or you can say, ¿Dónde está usted? Oh, okay. Look at that. I done learning. You learning beats? You learning? Good. Let's make it happen. So, Dr. Knowles, um, thank you so much once again for joining us. One of the questions that I wanted to start off with, mm -hmm. so that we could get into proper dialogue is mm -hmm. what exactly is a mental health disorder? Okay. So I think the best way that I can answer that is if I give the definition of mental health, mm -hmm. and I tend to use the one provided by the World Health Organization, mm -hmm. um, which is, a, they define it as follows. It's a state of well-being in which an individual uh, is mm -hmm. able to achieve four criteria. So the first one is able to make a 
meaning contribution to society, um, is able to cope with the normal stresses of life, they're able to realize their abilities, and they're also able to work productively and fruitfully. And so essentially then we can say that if a person doesn't meet any one or all of those criteria, then there's a, to some extent a breach in their mental wellness mm. or their mental health. And so mental health um, essentially uh, it entails a person being able to work um, in all of their life arenas, um, able to be able to work at home or work or be able to function to, without any impairment. And so when I think about uh, mental health in general, it's important for us to realize that it impacts not only the way that you think, mm -hmm. but also the way that you feel and the way that you act. And so if someone is acting strangely, then it goes to say then that their mental health is most likely compromised. And so in terms of um, mental illnesses, um, what we're seeing now very, very prevalent is depression, major mm -hmm. depressive disorder, mm -hmm. generalized anxiety disorder, substance use disorders, and then also what I call the organic mental illnesses, bipolar, mm -hmm. schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. And so it, we want to shatter the stigma that is so pervasive in our society yeah. because it's causing people not to be able to get the help that they need. Right. I'm hoping now that our listening audience after today's show, they will be better informed and essentially sensitize the importance of realizing the importance of mental wellness mm -hmm. and mental health. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. um, because that was my, my next question was if you could just identify some of the disorders, I think mm -hmm. you said depression, anxiety, yeah. substance abuse. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you use another category of the yeah. bipolar. What, what do you call that category? So I use that as to say organic in the right. sense okay. that um, those tend to be, um, well, all of them tend to have a genetic link. Mm -hmm. But with schizophrenia and bipolar, we tend to see that very heavily amongst persons who would have a family history. Mm -hmm. um, of mental illnesses. And that would also, if I can just throw in this important nugget, it's important bohemians that we know our family history. Right. Too many of us are very ashamed to talk about, you know, grandma who's acting strangely and may have had a formal diagnosis of, let's say, bipolar disorder type one. But if you don't talk about it, and we're seeing that, you know, it's anecdotally that it's skipping generations. So mm -hmm. grandma may have had a mental illness, but her son or daughter may not. But then the grandson or the granddaughter we see how may have a mental illness, mm -hmm. but if we don't talk about it for them to know that it is in their family history, mm -hmm. they're going to miss it. It's going to be misdiagnosed and it's going to cause a more a poor quality of life because that person is not going to get the help that they need. Um, that is basically essential given that there is a family history of mental illness. Mm -hmm. So I want to throw on that point. So do you feel as if all disorders or mental disorders are hereditary or are, not do you all, have no. some that are done? Um, are, based on i guess circumstances mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so what we do know based on the research is that there's it's multifaceted so mm -hmm. there may be a genetic predisposition and i think some of the research would indicate that that may be as high as 50 60 percent mm -hmm. that's also environmental and there's also substance use we have mm -hmm. to throw that in there and that is particularly important uh, prior to the brain's development. I'll be happy to talk more about that. Mm -hmm. And so a combination of issues um, that people may be dealing with can contribute to them to developing a mental uh, disorder. Mm -hmm. So to give you an example um, in terms of, you know, an environmental would be for those who would have um, just came out of Hurricane Dorian right. in September 2019. If you can imagine, you know, just seeing the pictures and what those persons went through. Um, I have patients who the very sound of rain causes them to develop a panic attack. Wow. And so, you know, that is an example of a situation based on their environment where they went through this horrible monster of a hurricane. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, they're dealing with the effects of it. Um, I'm also seeing, again, as an example, where persons, uh, young men in particular, and young women, mm -hmm. but more so young men who start using substances prior to their brains uh, being developed, which is normally around the age of 24, 25. Mm -hmm by smoking marijuana, i.e., uh, as an example, we've seen a lot of them convert mm -hmm. to schizophrenia, uh, schizophrenic-like behavior. Mm -hmm. So they tend to have, you know, the paranoia or the, have the persecutory delusions, hearing voices, even though they may not have a family history of uh, mental illness such as schizophrenia, but by the mere fact that they've been using substances so often mm -hmm. and so um, before their brain has developed, they develop these these um, mental illnesses. And so I say that to say I cannot support, I do not support the legalization of recreational marijuana because I see what it's doing, the damage it's doing to our young people. Oh, that's another topic in itself. Yes, it I'd is. I'd like indeed. to have one of those topics very soon. <laughs> um, but 
Yeah, so we see where some are hereditary, and then, like you said, some are based on um, circumstances, yes. some are based on triggers, oh, whatever absolutely. have you. Um, and so these are the type of uh, issues that we see from day to day mm -hmm. um, and average people. Yeah. But how do we tell, how do we determine, for instance, you, say, for, you said that grandma would have had or may have had some mm -hmm. bipolar issue mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. um, your mom may have had depression so how can we identify mm -hmm. um prior to getting diagnosed from someone like yourself yeah. if someone has a mental disorder yeah so one of the um, practices that i incorporate as a physician is getting a detailed family history of the patient that comes to me um whether they're presenting to me for a mental health issue mm -hmm. or even for a physical issue physical. Mm -hmm. important to ask and i'd be very specific you know, do you have a family history of mental illnesses, for example, depression, schizophrenia, bipolar? Mm -hmm. And then persons, you know, would say something to the effect, yes, I do remember my grand aunt or my grand uncle um, you know, having to be admitted to the Sandilands Rehabilitation Center mm -hmm. or they would have been acting strangely. And so that more or less clues me in that there may be, you know, perhaps a genetic predisposition mm -hmm. for that person um, having a mental illness. So someone who presents to me with depression one of the um, studies that we know about uh, depression is that persons who have very low serotonin levels within their families, they tend to be more um, depressed, they mm -hmm. tend to have more substance use disorders, and they also tend to be very suicidal. And um, I was just thinking about an example of it. I don't know if you're familiar with the novelist uh, Ernest Hemingway. Mm -hmm. Well, he committed suicide. He had a very uh, f strong family history. Mm -hmm. Of depression such that five of them committed suicide over four generations wow. and so that definitely suggests that there is a genetic predisposition and so most likely i'm thinking that they would have had low serotonin levels so mm. which causes them to feel depressed not to be able to sleep um to be you know depressed not have any appetite or maybe overeating and so when you recognize the importance of family history it is within the context especially with mental illnesses because you don't want to diagnose misdiagnose someone right you know, as being, you know, an anti, have an antisocial behavior, mm -hmm. or what we say in the Bahamas, being rude, mm -hmm. um, when in fact it could be that that child, and usually with schizophrenia, as an example, we tend to see it in the teens, mm -hmm. um, they may be developing, you know, uh, schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. And so by recognizing that and knowing that, we're able to say, well, okay, perhaps this is our issue now that we need to explore and be able to treat that young person um, to the best of our abilities. Uh, during your years of practice, what seems to be the most common disorder among your patients? Among patients. So I definitely would say um, major depressive disorder, and particularly post-COVID-19. If I can be honest with you, Trish, one of the best things about COVID-19, especially in the Bahamas, from what I've seen, is it made people to realize the importance of their mental health. Yeah. It's certainly uprooted, certainly made people to really appreciate the importance of it. And especially those who would have gone through Hurricane Dorian and then mm -hmm. months just afterwards were sh just thrust into a pandemic, if, mm -hmm. you, if you can imagine. Mm -hmm. That took a toll on a lot of people. So depression is high on the list. We have a lot of people who are walking around faking it, um, who are very depressed. And it's the quality of life. And so, yeah, they may be able to do their uh, duties at home and at work, but then the quality of life is so poor, they're not sleeping well. Yeah. They are feeling depressed. They are perhaps you know not having any appetite. And so these are the people that we want to catch because if not treated properly, if mm -hmm. not treated early, it can get worse over time and unfortunately could lead to suicide. You said depression. What was the other one? So depression is high on the list. I would definitely say the next would be substance use disorder. I'm okay. seeing that particularly amongst our men. Yeah. And so with the women, women are more, um, they tend to have higher rates of depression. Mm -hmm more suicide attempts compared to men, but unfortunately men tend to have higher successful suicide rates. And with that, a lot of um, uh, my um, male counterparts, they tend to use substances yeah. to deal with whatever issues that they're facing. And so we want to get the message out, that is not the way to go. Mm -hmm. You know, you may get some relief just temporarily from Temporary. smoking that marijuana joint. Mm -hmm. We've seen an uptick in co cocaine use disorder, mm -hmm. definitely alcohol use disorder, mm -hmm. it's all across the nation. Mm -hmm. And so we want people to understand the importance of addressing their mental issues head on rather than trying to look for it in any kind of substance use or even in behavioral use such as gambling disorder. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I, I get what you're saying as far as the gambling, it's gambling, yeah. gambling, yeah. drinking, marijuana. But do we find that in women though? 
primarily yeah. in. Mm -hmm. Really? We do. Yep. Yeah. So with women, um, like I said, depression would be definitely high on the list when it comes to in terms of women, major depressive disorder. Um, I would even say general generalized anxiety disorder as well. Um, with the substance use, we do see some women with substance use disorders, not mm -hmm. as common as uh, men. So mm -hmm. to give you an example, you know, I have my ward on uh, the Silence Rehabilitation Center. Um, we've been having high capacity in terms of men being admitted, and we would have maybe one or two women around the same time. Wow. Yeah, so it's not as common um, in terms of women being, you know, admitted for substance use disorder, but the depression uh, the anxiety, definitely. And one good thing I can say, again, anecdotally, is yeah. that women tend mm -hmm. to take these issues more seriously. Yeah. And so they seek help um, compared to men. I like that. I like that. And uh, why do you think that is? Because this is off topic. But why do you think it is with um, men mm -hmm. not wanting to seek help? Yeah. And I've been shattering this. I think it has a lot to do with our culture. We as men being taught from a young age that we should not express ourselves, right. that you know we shouldn't cry, you know that if we're looked down as being soft yeah. or sissy. Mm -hmm. You know we tend to use that uh, that phrase. Um, and I think as a result of that, most men we tend to just keep things in, mm -hmm. or if we are being bothered, we tend to smoke, we tend to drink, etc. Mm -hmm. Women, on the other hand, have stronger social networks. Mm -hmm. You guys tend to take your health much more seriously. Mm -hmm. You talk a lot more, which in itself is therapy. Mm -hmm. And so as a result of that, you know, women are able to get the help that they need much faster than men. And so I'm working on trying to get our men to get the, the help that they need. And that's both physical in terms of medical illnesses yeah. Yeah. and also mentally. Yeah, I, I noticed maybe you can um, help me on this, but there are a few persons who I know who deal with or who are on the front line of our country and they tend to abuse, you know, mm -hmm. alcohol and maybe not smoking per se, but gambling and stuff mm -hmm. as their source. Sure. Um, I guess for whatever healing or trauma they may have encountered yeah. during their time. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your views on that? Is there, do you know, because I know that you may not know this, is there, is there, psychologist therapists from whoever that would go to various institutions to help mm -hmm. those who are on the front line yeah so you hit a, the nail right on the head for something that i am most um passionate about i think is very well needed we need more upscaling in our resources mm -hmm. particularly in the family islands we mm -hmm. tend to be very nassau centric mm -hmm. i'm concerned about for example the incest and rape that takes place oh, and yeah. that goes you know you don't hear anything about it just yeah. swept, swept under, under the rug. but the trauma that that young person and that's both males and females mm -hmm. that they have to deal with is lifelong it's mm -hmm. you know impacts them for the rest of their lives mm -hmm. and so with that i think it's important that we try to and when i say we particularly the ministry of health that we try to provide resources on these islands mm -hmm. whether it's a matter of sending someone a psychologist with a physician um, with a psychiatrist mm -hmm. at least you know once every month or once every day uh, you know twice every month mm -hmm. to be able to help people who are in need because if we don't reach them mm -hmm. out to them they may not get the help that they need and mm -hmm. so again the quality of life matters it's more to life than just being alive if you can imagine being so overwhelmed and you can't talk to anybody mm -hmm. you're depressed you're sad you're suicidal and this is going on for months months yeah. years at a time that's you know a concern because at the end of the day that's your life and yeah. if you're not taking care of your life to the best of your ability then how are you able to fulfill your purpose in life yeah. and it's not god's will for us to be suffering and um living like that yeah. i want people to really hear that that's not god's purpose i cannot accept that that's that's being god's will for one's life yeah yeah we're supposed to be living abundantly man Ab absolutely yeah. that's that's what the physically says, mentally right? emotionally everything, spiritually everything whole and yes. complete yes. yeah so um, do you happen to find that during particular seasons that you perhaps get a certain caliber of people mm -hmm. with uh, similar mental disorders? Yeah, so yeah? almost like clockwork, once after Christmas and New Year's, yeah. there's an increase in persons wanting to be admitted for substance use. So alcohol, the marijuana. Yeah, so they want to celebrate and party and have a good time, spend time with the family, drink, smoke and all of that. And so they realize that hey, it's destroying me. Mm -hmm. And so they then want to seek help. And so usually around right after the Christmas, the New Year's, we tend to see an uptick in persons wanting to be admitted, mm -hmm. particularly for substance use disorders. Um, in terms of the depression, anxiety, um, that can happen pretty much, sure, you know, anytime yeah. right throughout the year. 
because again, it's no Over no, around Valentine's for women. Um, no. <laughs> yeah, I, no. I mean, I'm I serious. can't think offhand where I can say exactly, but mm. certainly you can imagine that could be one reason why someone would may want to be depressed. But do do you get that? Do you either at Sandalands or at um, Emmanuel Wellness where women come in because of broken heart? Yes, yes, definitely. Um, divorce. Absolutely, the boss. Let's so. talk about that. This is a women show, man. Let's talk about that. A little bit. <laughs> I mean, what, 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 who do you see? What, what do they say to you? How, how could you? Well, first of all, I think perhaps being a male, yeah. I do see some men who would fall in that same category. category. But mm -hmm. certainly, I see more women mm -hmm. um, who would present, you know, for feeling depressed because they are a relationship that has failed. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen some who are even to the point of suicidal. And we can talk about that. I'm very concerned, for example, in our teenage adolescents who are cutting mm -hmm. themselves. Um, you know, self harm, cutting yeah. um, on the wrist yeah, and on the inner thighs, mm -hmm. and so some of them they tend to present to the emergency room because it is a emergency. Yeah. You know. Um. So yeah, definitely that tends to be high on the list for why persons would end up developing depression. Then also financial reasons, um, not being able to take care of their bills or their expenses, take care of their children, etc. And um, also with that, I've uh, I tend to see persons too as a consequence of substance use. Mm -hmm. So when they start to have withdrawals, mm -hmm. they start to have this plethora of negative feeling as a result of not having access to the marijuana or the mm -hmm. cocaine or the alcohol. So yeah, so I see that quite heavily amongst women as well as men. And if you were to give some type of demographic based on what you and your colleagues um, have seen, how will you describe a typical day outside of Christmas where you say there's substance abuse, mm -hmm. outside of Valentine's, because I just put that in there because of love. <laughs> but what what would be your average patient, typical patient, typical patient, coming to see you about a mental disorder? Mental, okay. Um, so I guess if I can define that within the public setting yeah. and then within the um, private. private. So exactly. within the public setting, for example, of being on call in the, at uh, Princess Margaret mm -hmm. in the uh, you would see a young man in his early 20s, typically. Mm -hmm. And with that, almost always, I can almost knock on wood, it's mm -hmm. because of cannabis use or marijuana. Wow. Mm -hmm. They have some sort of um, induced psychosis. Mm -hmm. right? um, they're putting a lot of stuff. We don't know exactly what they're smoking, mm -hmm. um, if it's not the pure grade of uh, cannabis. Mm -hmm. um, and so that would be the typical in terms of the men um, that I see. And in general, generally too, um, in terms of the female, it would be in the case where, you know, she is uh, what we call power suicidal, again, with the mm -hmm. cutting. Um, I've seen probably one for the year, but I know last year I was getting very concerned because mm -hmm. it was almost like almost every call I did, I saw at least one female in her early 20s or late te teens who mm -hmm. presented with um, self-harm, you know, wow. feeling depressed, wanting to kill herself, commit suicide. And so with that, um, it definitely goes to say that our young people in general uh, seem to be hardest hit. Mm -hmm. And a study done, particularly in light of COVID-19, that was published in The Lancet, mm -hmm. looked at uh, 204 nations and territories around the world, including mm -hmm. the Bahamas, mm -hmm. um, during that year, 2020. And they found that the younger generation, those in their teens, 20s, and 30s, were hardest hit when it came to depression and anxiety. And then females also by a ratio of two to one compared to males. Wow. We're gonna we're gonna explore the, those statistics um, just after this break because I want to know what would be the reason or what we would think the young adults would have an issue with depression around that maybe because they're not socializing or I don't know whatever that is we're gonna explore that sure but let's take a break beats and right after that we'll get to know what this is all about. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Yeah. Knowles, this yes. is Odessa Francis. Yes. Oh, yeah? Uh, awesome. Yeah, I remember your face. Awesome, yeah. awesome, awesome. Yeah. So I think you're doing excellent. You're doing pretty well. Um, everything is right on time. Everything yeah, I didn't realize we're already half hour. Yes, uh, already. Two. It wow. goes by so quickly. Yeah. Uh, for those who are tuning in on Facebook, thank you so much for joining us today. If you have any questions for Dr. Knowles, please send them through. When we come back on, I would like to do the live read for Emmanuel. We can do that right when we come off on the break.
Oh yeah, yeah, we do. It's like a revolving door for quite a lot. You can see that concerns me as well. So of all of those, I'm looking at issues of how we can best address that. Because at the end of the day, the more persons have to be admitted, it causes more damage to the brain. It's like an insult to the brain each time. And so, yeah, it's it's a public health issue that I really want us to address as a whole as a nation. So we get people not to have to be admitted so many times over and over and over. And again, I don't know if you heard my comment. That's one reason why I can't support recreational now. Right. I can't. I'm sorry. I, what I'm seeing, it's going to young people. It's really concerning to me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely medicinal. Yes, I have no problem with it. But recreational. Yeah. So I think the therapists, physicians, all y'all should come together. Yeah. And do and something we, about I'm not that. Holly and I were just talking about that. You know, we really need to lobby for the you know persons who are making the decisions in, mm -hmm. in terms of legislature to be aware, you know, of what needs to happen mm -hmm. for the sake of the nation. Listening to Your Lane with Coach Trish Hanna. Welcome back. If you're joining me for the first time, we have with us in studio Dr. Knowles. Dr. Knowles, Leonardo Knowles, to be exact, is um, he is the co-chief executive officer at Physician. Mm -hmm at Emmanuel Medicine Medical Center. And also he works at um, on the substance abuse wards at the Sandilands Rehabilitation Center as a registrar, yeah. right? And just before yeah. our break, we were discussing uh, the various um, statistics regarding the age demographic mm -hmm. of um, um, those who, I guess are depressed, mm -hmm. um, and I think he said it's not. It was around the COVID nineteen, and it's yeah. roughly the young adults, the yeah. youths that um, had issues or mm -hmm. were were um, what's the word? Um, come help me, doc. Yeah. These are your words. So he, yeah. um, just uh, you what a substance abuse. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what else? What, what's going on around that? So substance use, um, definitely depression and anxiety, mm -hmm. and so that study that I made reference to. That was published in the Lancet looked at what was happening in terms of depression and anxiety during mm -hmm. the whole the entire entire 2020. And so based on that, that's why I love that study because right. it gives us a very good snapshot of what the world in general was dealing with, and right. certainly the Bahamas in terms of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. But it's I'm surprised that you said the statistics that the young adults, because mm -hmm. I would think it would be the older adults mm -hmm. or the you know, mid. 30s, 40s, or whatever have you, mm -hmm. 50s rather, who are mm -hmm. concerned about having to take care of yeah. of either caretaker, the primary take mm -hmm. caretaker of their children. Mm -hmm. Um, because teenagers, from what I know, they go to school. Uh, and in this case, just go on mm -hmm. um online, do what they have to do, get your educate education, right. and talk on the phone or just talk, you know, chat on on their cell phone. And that's it. Mm -hmm. So why would you think, oh, you know, okay. it would be that age bracket right. versus the 40s, 50s? Okay. So the best way I can answer that, again, is to give you another set of statistics yeah. um, based on globally. So we know that um, based on, again, worldwide, persons ages 15 to 25, that's a key population. Mm -hmm. um, for one person that successfully in that age group commits suicide, there can be up to 200 who would have attempted and compared to our geriatric patients, persons 75 or older, for every one that commits suicide, there would be up to about four. So you could see the, the, definitely the difference in the attempts. And it has a lot to do with several factors. You know, the impulsivity of young people, um, certainly substance abuse is mm -hmm. high on the list. And in fact, for persons who are depressed mm -hmm. and who use substances that actually can make their likelihood of committing suicide or attempting suicide um, much, much worse. Mm -hmm. And so with our young people in context of COVID-19 um, and even my experience, um, I've had to, a lot of adolescents that would have dealt with anxiety. When I say to the point where they had to be brought in mm -hmm. because of anxiety disorders. Um, even our primary school student, if you can imagine 2020, that was a year, you know, persons, we had to literally 
adapt like to a total new way of life, mm -hmm. being isolated at home in front of a computer to be able to get your education. Some teenagers who were scheduled to go off to school couldn't right. even go couldn't. anymore that yeah. year. Yeah. So all of that in the context of, of 2020, I think caused a lot of our young people to be affected. Not to say that those who you know in our 40s, so it's right. about some middle aged persons, because we too were impacted uh, and not only directly in terms of getting COVID-19, or losing a loved losing one who had COVID-19. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of persons had lost their jobs mm -hmm. during that time. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it was a major stressful time mm -hmm. globally for all mm -hmm. of us. Mm -hmm. And so just to give you a little idea of why young people compared to older within that context of COVID-19, I mm -hmm. think that's the best way to explain it to you. When you, now, let me, let me be real with you. The purpose of this show or the premise of this show was based on, I think it was about two months, three months ago, I was parked in um, my kid's swim club yard, right? Okay. And there is a lady that came up to me. I know her very well. I've known her for years. And she's like, that's Trishon? She came, she ran to me to my car, and she started talking about what's going on with her. Yeah. She can't find a job. Yeah. Um, these people are trying to get her. Mm -hmm. um, every single thing that you can she she laughed she cried this it was at least i mean the entire time so it's like two hours because i have to wait for my daughter and then i have to wait for my other two kids right. um two hours where she just spoke about wow. what's going on with her and her mm -hmm. life and what's happening and nobody's nobody wants to employ her and she's extremely i mean she went to college she's beautiful by the way right. in fact right. the people in the beauty industry would know who she is sure. um and she mentioned your name. Okay. Yeah, I think I know you're talking mm. about. Yeah. She mentioned your name. She asked me if I've ever heard of, of you. I said, no, I've never heard of you before. Yeah. Um, that's why I went looking and searching wow. for you. Because I said, you have to come here. I have to, yeah. I have to get you here. I got to get you to talk. Because I'm getting terry dyed and I put on the wrong lashes today. So let me see <laughs> if I can get these eyes back, yeah. these tears back in my eyes. It was so heavy. Yeah. Speaking with her was yeah. so heavy because she has so much potential. I'm not saying she's not dead or anything right. like that, but right. it's just that she left this country yeah. seeking for help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I do. Uh, okay. Just yesterday, um, I saw a young lady um, in her 40s, same scenario. I mean, she wept and wailed because of what she's going through. Um, as children, in fact, her words to me and my psychiatric nurse was pretty much this. The only reason I'm alive is because of my children. Right. Because right. if I didn't yes. have my children, I would end it all. Yes, I heard that. Um, and so with that, yeah, you know, major depression. That's, that's no, doubt, no doubt about that. And so my first thought of business um, was to address the depression. She had to be placed on medication. We had to provide her talk therapy. We had to help her as best as we can with the social support and then spirituality. So my approach to dealing with mental illness or even physical is to address the whole person, the biopsychosocial social yeah. spiritual approach. And so I find that that is what works because when you address each of those components, it gives that person a better yeah. opportunity to be able to overcome whatever mental illnesses that they're dealing with. And of course, the quality of life that I speak of. And so I definitely see that very often um, more so with women, of so course. Everyday beautiful women, yeah. they are, yeah. you know, they're in the front lines or they, you know, working on Bay Street. Yes. they in um, corporate mm -hmm. society and yeah. they just, and then they come to see persons like yourself mm -hmm. after. Yeah, yeah. And what I also appreciate is that I'm seeing like colleagues at work because of us now speaking, those of us in the mental health profession, right. speaking about mental illnesses, they are now bringing their colleagues to get help, I which that. I think is extraordinary. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love that. Even churches have reached out to me with some of their parishioners who are dealing with it. And so it goes to show that this is uh, not a professional issue. It's all of us on board. Yeah. This is the health of our nation at hand. So we need to be our brothers and our sisters keeper. And, and so for that young lady, you know, you know, we want to definitely provide whatever help we can to point them in the right direction um, in terms of dealing with that, whatever social issues, whatever, um, of course, the biological component being they may need medication, they may have a family history 
of bipolar. I'm getting a picture of bipolar depression. Mm. That could be an, uh, um, at, at the forefront for this particular young lady. But then also spiritual. So yeah. you want to provide each of those areas to get them to be able to address them so that they can be fully uh, helped to the point where they can function normally. Let me talk about the medication. Mm -hmm. Can I be real? Of course. I have heard um, stories where persons say that when they take certain medications mm -hmm. for depression, yeah. etc., they feel worse mm -hmm. than actually not using it. So they try not to take it at yeah. all. Yeah. Talk, talk to me about that. Okay. I can only speak for me. Right. All right. Um, generally speaking, though, I don't put anyone on medication unless it's warranted. Right. Uh, for some persons, the talk therapy may be enough. I just had a young man, so it's just coincidental we're talking about this based on what I patients I saw yesterday. The young man, he needed talk therapy. Mm -hmm. So after that talk therapy, he was like, Dr. Knowles, I feel so much better. And so I said to him, you know what, let's see how you do this one month based on my recommendations, addressing all of those components. And if we don't see any improvement, then we will consider medication. So. I only put persons on medication when it's needed. Secondly, it's important, and my physician colleagues, I think they need to really, really understand that mm -hmm. you always want to start low on the low dose. Mm -hmm. You never want to start high, or you never want to even start at the standard. I don't do that. Mm -hmm. So I start low and I titrate up as needed. So that way you, you prevent any potential side effects. Because you're right, some of the medications have very, very nasty side effects. Mm -hmm. you know, some people describe feeling like a zombie, mm -hmm. like they do have any feeling you know you don't want to have that the quality of life if you're given the medication the medication should aid in helping them feel better Absolutely. and so that's my approach if it's warranted start low and then i titrate up certainly for the, with the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors mm -hmm. what class of medication we tend to prescribe for depression and anxiety mm -hmm. you um though, during that first week i find that it may have some mild side effects that may be from nausea feeling nauseous or they may feel a bit sleepy but usually after that first week no more than the second week, their body gets used to it. And certainly within a month, and this is why I love it, you, it they look like a total different person. Mm -hmm. The whole affect has changed. They're happier. They feel better. And so there's benefit in the medication. So it's not just the medication, but it's how it's prescribed and how it's administered. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, so if you were to name the, the medication so, that you said. For because. depression and anxiety, so we have the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. This is one class right. that has been proven to be very, very beneficial. And so essentially what it does is ensures that, you heard me talk about serotonin before, right. which is a happy neurotransmitter. So it increases the amount of serotonin um, within the brain's synaptic cleft so that person can feel better, they feel mm -hmm. happier, they can sleep better, they can you know, have an appetite, so on and so forth. So it addresses each of the components uh, as it relates to persons dealing with depression and anxiety. Okay. Okay. And, and with that, is this something that you feel as if is ongoing where they have to take those type of medications for the rest of their life? Right. Or you, or you feel as if that they <clears throat> probably because this particular season mm -hmm. or an issue what they're going through with, for instance, their finances, mm -hmm. but they're probably taking it for this time. Yeah. And then after that, they, they could discard. Right. Right. Yeah. Very, very good question, Trish. So, what is, this is important. I, I need all Bahamians to understand that certain medical conditions can cause people to feel depressed, to not eat, to not sleep, et cetera, et cetera. And so you want to rule out any medical cause. So, for example, thyroid issues. I'm mm -hmm. seeing women who have thyroid issues, mm -hmm. who um, you know, have low uh, hypothyroidism, we call it, mm -hmm. feel depressed. They feel they, they can't sleep. They just overall quality of life. And when lo and behold, you check, you do the blood works, you check and you find out they have a thyroid issue. Mm -hmm. Having low hemoglobin levels, persons who are anemic can cause you to feel depressed. And so it's important to rule out any medical issues first because the medical issues can be addressed relatively quickly yeah. and easily. And once you figure that out, you could address that the person gets back to where they were before. If we've ruled all of that out and we find that they have to be on a medication, I tend to recommend at least for three to six months. And then after that time, we taper them off to see if, what they can do. So it gives them a jump start right. to be able to see if they can feel better. And then eventually after that three to six month period, we taper them because they have to be tapered off the medication mm -hmm. to see if they can then function optimally. Now I've had some person that has worked. Some people, they ended up becoming more depressed or falling back into the depression. So we had to reinstate it. Mm -hmm. And so for them, it's maybe making me wonder that they may have. You heard me talk about having a genetic predisposition yeah. that may mean they may need to be on it for life. So it depends on the person. 
But again, the medical clearance, we've got to medically check for all of the medical potential issues. Once we rule those out, then we say they have a you know, major depressive disorder, general anxiety disorder, based on the history. Important to get a full history. And then you can treat that accordingly. And for me, three to six months, and if they want to come off of it, I take with them off and we see how they do. Hmm. I have a question for you now. That's a good one. Because <laughs> based on what you said, right? For instance, um, someone who may not know their biological parents, mm -hmm. you know, we have a lot of that in the moment. Yeah. They don't know the father, yeah. you know, whatever have you. So they can only go based on what's going on with them. Mm -hmm. um, how do you deal with that? Yeah. So as best as we can. So whatever history I can get, we run with it. But definitely the medical clearance is important, doing those basic lab works, doing a physical exam, just to make sure again. And some people have had to have a CT scan of the brain, in fact, mm -hmm. to be admitted um, to the Sandlin's Rehabilitation Center if you're a first time person being admitted, we require you to have a CT scan of the brain. Mm -hmm. um, and so once we've done all of that, and we based on the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, the fifth edition, which is like the Bible mm -hmm. for those of us in the mental health field, um, anywhere anywhere in the world, this is a, gives a diagnostic criteria for any mm -hmm. mental illnesses. And so once that person has met that criteria, then we can go ahead and diagnose them appropriately and correctly with that particular mental health illness and then that will lead us to treat them accordingly. accordingly. So Dr. Knowles, how can you tell the difference between someone who has a medical illness versus someone who has spiritual issues? Uh, a very excellent question. Um, no, and again, it's, and I thank God for giving us physicians the knowledge and the wisdom yeah. because I've seen that. Yeah. I can think of three instances, all women, by the way, where we did everything when I say we, the clinical team, did everything, medically cleared them, there was no medical issue, we treated them with medication, if the medication wasn't working, we went up on the dosage, mm -hmm. wasn't working, we switched them to other medication, nothing seemed to work. Mm -hmm. One young lady that comes to mind, I, I'll never forget it for as long as I live, um, I was on the ward, the female ward at the Silence Rehabilitation Center. This was a small, tiny young lady. She was shorter than you, but mm -hmm. perhaps your body built. Mm -hmm. But it took about six men, attendants, to hold her down oh, no. because of that strength. Yeah. She ended up absconding. And to this day, it makes me wonder um, if indeed, if that was a spiritual issue. From the history, the mother told us, who was of Haitian descent, mm -hmm. told us that they, there was some element of witchcraft mm -hmm. and voodoo. And so that is one case where I recognize that, you know what, this is a spiritual issue. Mm -hmm. No matter what we do medically or me medication wise or mentally, it's not going to fix that. And two other scenarios, very, very similar. And so, yeah, you recognize that, hey, this I'm is more right. right. And I've had to refer patients to pastors that I trust who, are, who deal in the, um, you know, in terms of Deliverance. exorcism and persons who may have demons mm -hmm. um, because I would have done everything possible. Mm -hmm. And so that way, they would have gotten their deliverance. And I've seen the success stories. And it is important to recognize that if it's not medical, if it's not mental, you have to consider that spiritual element. It is real, very real. As sure as I'm point, sitting here. At what point do you recognize that it is spiritual? And right. then not everyone have that discernment that you have. Right, right. So how, well, how, how do other physicians, how do you think other physicians deal with that? Yeah, so again, I can't really speak for of my, my colleagues. Yeah. However, you know, I, at least for those of us at the Silence Rehabilitation Center, I don't think I'm the only one who would have recognized that we've done everything medically wise. Mm -hmm. We've put them on the best medication um, or the, the, the appropriate medication, but mm -hmm. yet nothing seems to be changing. And so at that point, you recognize that, hey, this may be spiritual. And so it may be a matter of us referring them to be seen by a chaplain or having someone who is of that faith who right. can be able to, to recognize, you know, person who may be demon possessed or dealing with demonic issues. All right. But what I don't want is for people to demonize mental illness, mm -hmm. because by far I, I see more people who have a general uh, mental illness as opposed to having demon possession. Not all mental illnesses are due to persons being demon possessed. And so that's a point I want to hit at home because I have people in the church who believe that if you're depressed, you got to be dealing with a demon. And that makes no sense to me because if we we're going to talk about the Bible, how do you explain Elijah? Yeah. How do you explain Naomi? How do you explain Jesus Christ at that very moment when he felt forsaken by God? I mean, he was depressed at that point, whether or not we want to admit that, but based on what he went through. So I say that to say, 
it takes um, wisdom. You must recognize based on you know your level of professional training mm -hmm. what can be done. And if it's not working medically and you're giving the best medical care, then perhaps you now need to consider spiritually. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It does. But you know, I had when I borrow <laughs> up because, um, and we don't need to go there too, too much, but you don't feel as if any form of depression, anxiety and stuff, if it's not from God, where is it coming from? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say demons per se, right? But you know, I go with that, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I can understand why the church has that um, thought process, but then again, you don't want to demonize it, no. as you said. No. But if that is not from God, who is it coming from? Right. Or where is it coming from? Yeah. And so again, it's 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 a very complicated scenario. I mean, I have persons who are in the church, but would have had issues from their church childhood yeah you know we talk about um generational curses i believe that that is the case that can happen mm -hmm. you know for a person who had been molested or may have been um raped some girls they struggle not having a father in their life i mean i was blown away when i went to andras mm -hmm. with um dr Kirk christie and the other clinical team members mm -hmm. the amount of young girls who were if i can give the exact figure who are under the age of 12 were dealing with issues as it relates to their relationship with their mother, mother saying they can't control them, etc. 100% of them, the ones I saw, yeah. the, the same common denominator, either their father was not involved in their life or their father was not present in their lives at all. And so that says to me, a young girl, a girl not having a father, that really does something to her. Mm -hmm. Boys too, mm -hmm. but with the girls that's coming to the, the forefront. And so I set up to say, just because you may be a Christian doesn't mean you're not going to deal with life's issues and problems, yeah. especially if it's something that's rooted in your childhood yeah. that hasn't been addressed. That, that's yeah. good. That's good right there. So, so when we have situations with persons who have um, anxiety or depression or mm -hmm. just feeling some kind of way because of, you know, something that their parents did or didn't do, or something that took place in their childhood molestation, as you've stated, or, you know, um, rejection mm -hmm. for that kind, for that matter. But they don't necessarily have to go to see you mm -hmm. or see a psychiatrist or see um, some therapist or somebody. What okay. what can they do then in states like that where they um suffering from withdrawals or suffering from rejection or suffering from... Um, you know, no, someone not being present, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, what, what do you recommend for persons mm -hmm. like that? Okay. So the first thing I want to say is that it's okay to not feel okay. It's okay to recognize that, hey, I'm, you know, something that I'm constantly thinking about that may have happened to me when I was younger. Mm -hmm. um, it's, that's okay. So because it's okay to feel that way, it means that you should seek someone to talk mm -hmm. to. And so, Mm -hmm. That's my usually my recommendation for uh, persons who may be dealing with issues from their childhood. They will, you know, they may not be overly depressed. They may not be anxious. It may not be affecting them to, to the degree of some persons who need professional help mm -hmm. to find someone that they can talk to. And so that's why I like with the youth groups at church, yeah. you know, being able to bring speakers in to talk to these young people. Mm -hmm. So that way it opens the floor for to, or discussion. And I've been invited. Um, I can think of at least two instances and where I was just blown away by the stories of the young people that they would have shared what they would have been going through. And so that's the other thing I want to hit on the head mm -hmm. with whatever little time we have. Mm -hmm. You know, older adults tend to think young people don't have any, don't issues. Have any issues and nothing is further from the truth. Ah. You know, a lot of them are being bullied. A lot of them, like I mentioned, not having a father yeah. in their lives affects them. Um, maybe how their mothers or their parents may handle them, affects yeah. them. A teacher says something negative to mm -hmm. them that they can't get out of their head. Yeah, they, we go through stuff as long yeah. as you're alive. And so one of the things I'm really, really hoping that can happen is that we start a mental health curriculum from as early as the fifth grade in, in our schools. I and so that. whether in the health sciences or in the life sciences or that way, mm -hmm. kids are taught about mental illnesses from a younger age. Mm -hmm. And particularly the one I mentioned about the brain's development and not using any substances prior to your brain's completion of development, mm -hmm. which is again, is about age 24 to 25. I hope the persons that we are tuning into the show or at least hear it at some point, because this is, this is powerful. If you want to have a better society, you have to start with the little ones. You have to start from the youths. Definitely. Um, because we're going to have a continuous cycle mm -hmm. of 
um, substance abuse um, matters and crime yeah, exactly. and all these different things taking yes. place. Crime because mm -hmm. either the person is going to commit suicide themselves right. or go and try to kill somebody else mm -hmm. um, for whatever reason mm -hmm. because there's hurt. And if you were to ever, and I'm sure you probably did this, speak to a criminal, somebody who um, did whatever you could possibly think of. Mm -hmm. More than one um, cases I've heard uh, being, a, and I'll tell you about that later, um, I've heard where it started from they were young. Yeah. It started from someone not being there. Mm -hmm. And I just read just now on um, the lies, they said, especially when you have never heard, I love you from both mommy and daddy. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, that that ooh. hits deep. Deeply. That hits deep. Yeah. But it starts from it starts from home. Mm -hmm. And if you can't get them from home, because there's only so much um if a parent isn't there, yeah. if, if a parent isn't um in the life or mm -hmm. uh presently, you know, aware of what's going on with their mm -hmm. children, then perhaps we can get it in the schools yeah. or we can get it at the churches or we get it of some youth organization mm -hmm. where they can ex Get, be exposed of how to deal with life situations. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's persons like yourself and others who can actually go ahead and just, you know, get the ball rolling, <laughs> you know, and do whatever that you can possibly do to lobby this particular thing in our schools. Yeah. But we got to make it happen. Absolutely. And I totally agree. And again, we don't want to neglect the family islands. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm really bleeding for the family islands. Because the resources there are so scarce and Very a lot of scarce. people are hurting, yeah. believe it or not. And they can't, it's more difficult for them because everyone knows everyone and they right. don't want to talk. Nobody wants to talk. Right, because, yeah. you know, I don't want my business out there. Yeah. And so it's really, really important that we invest in our nation from a public health standpoint. That's, that's important. That's important. So we're going to take a break. And after the break, uh, we want to talk about... Let's talk more about what women go through mm -hmm. as far as depression, anxiety. Let's talk about relationships a little bit. Let's talk about what you get to tell these women when you see them on a day to day basis yeah. right after this. Oh, that's so sad. That's so sad. Do you have any questions? Um, not really a question, just um. Yeah, my God. On the my point, God. yeah, it, it's on. Mm -hmm. Just on the point that uh, Dr. Knowles made about not demonizing uh, mental illness. Mm -hmm. um, from a really young age, from about the time I was in high school, junior high school, I've always been fascinated with psychology and psychiatry. I think that as far as like science is called medical science, it's one of it's it's such an interesting thing because you're essentially trying to understand the difference between me and you mm -hmm. that's how i look at it yeah. and when you're talking about mental illnesses and people rush to like demonize it mm -hmm. i don't think that the term you use natural mental illnesses mm -hmm. i don't think that they're necessarily a bad thing if you learn how to manage it mm -hmm. what i mean by that is um Inside the, let's say, let's look at the body of Christ, right? Mm -hmm. There has to be diversity. I, myself, I have ADHD and, and the term that they use a lot in the ADHD community is um, neuro, neurodiverseness, neurodivergence. Mm -hmm. um, and it just basically means that my brain isn't broken. It just works a different way from right. you. Right. Right. And because of that, I see things differently from you. We. I can't, if all, if everybody in the body of Christ, right, What's come from a perfect house, how could I ever relate to someone mm -hmm. who is up to skip four meals a week? How could I re relate to someone who feels sad if I don't, if I've never felt that level of sadness in my life? Mm -hmm. And I think that's where quote unquote mental illnesses sort of come into play. Cause mm -hmm. you know, the people, the first thing they say is, Oh, God don't make mistakes. And I agree that. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean everybody is the same. Mm -hmm. Sometimes things aren't a mistake. It's just a difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
everybody experiences life differently. Yeah. Everybody's circumstances Definitely. are different. Definitely. Everybody, their environment are different. Absolutely. The way that they were raised and stuff are different. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and that's just how it is. Right. I, I like how you used the term the body of Christ. If right. if if all of us were just hands, then how would we go about walking? Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. So yeah, you're gonna have different experiences. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think that's why it's so important not to judge people. Don't judge me. You're so judgmental. No. Uh, it bothers me. Mm -hmm. But no, you hit the nail right on there too, buddy. I agree with you. Yeah. Our experiences are different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's something, right? Mm -hmm. One, mm -hmm. two, three. Welcome back. Those who are tuning in, um, you're late. Okay, because we almost we almost ready to go. Um, but we have with us, Dr. Sean Knowles, and he is speaking to us about mental health issues, especially uh, for us as women, um, what we go through, uh, how to go about dealing with it. Um, we spoke about, you know, the difference, and I love this, the difference between um, someone who has an illness versus someone who has a spiritual mm -hmm. issue. Uh, we spoke about the different treatments and what medications we bring and how to start from the least amount of dos dosage right. and work your way up providing you that you need it right. you know and all these different things and guess what and he, i'm going to tell tell you this before he says this if you want to know more about him um the trusted and experienced team of dr sean Knowles and dr norad did i pronounce his name norad correctly morgan. dr yes. norad morgan is here to assist you and your loved ones hey Services offered at Emmanuel Medical Center include annual physicals, treatment for medical health disorders and mental health disorders, addiction counseling for substance misuse and gambling, confidential STI and HIV treatment and management, cosmetic surgery, pre-operative physicals and labs, hypertension, diabetes and cholesterol management, health and medical certificates, sick and well child visits, men's health and home visits. All are, uh, these are all services as at Emmanuel Medical Center. And Emmanuel Medical Center is located off Mackey Street at the corner of Roosevelt Avenue and Carib Road. Now their clinical hours are Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturday, from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., which is funny because you don't really find that many clinics open, private clinics open on a Saturday. That's awesome. For more information or to schedule an appointment, you can call 393-9355. And for those who may somehow forget what the number may be for tomorrow, it's 393-WELL. You can't get better than that. 393-WELL. And you can get to um, have a conversation with Dr. Knowles about everything that we discussed. And while you're at it, you can go and get your physical done. Because some of us ain't got our physical done for the year. Exactly. Oh, you need to get it together. Okay. All right. So let's get back. <laughs> let's get back to speaking about what we as women go through as far as depression and um anxiety and let's talk about relationships a little about that like you said you've seen some yeah. women that yeah. came in and talked about mm -hmm. what, what did they tell you did they actually open up and say well this man leave me with my five mm -hmm. children do you mm -hmm. hear those stories so very very interestingly um trish it presents based on some symptom that they're having mm -hmm. and i find with depression overwhelming majority of people they're not sleeping mm. all right so that in addition to appetite changes majority not eating um, in addition to that, decreased energy, can't concentrate, hyperactivity of the mind. So I tend to see them coming in because of these symptoms mm -hmm. with them based on the history. Yeah. They're going to follow history and doing the medical clearance, of course. Mm -hmm. You find out that, hey, what is the root of why you're going through this? Mm -hmm. Get them in an environment where I even have to dim the lights, get them very comfortable, build a rapport with them, for them to open up to me. Mm -hmm. And so you start, you find out that, hey, I was in a relationship, or I was in an abusive relationship. Um, I was really in love with him. He ended up marrying someone else. And mm -hmm. so to find that that is the cause of why they're dealing with all of these issues. And so once we get the history and we're able to talk about it, the talk therapy, right. very, very, very necessary. To get them to open up to talk about what's going on. And if I can address those issues, the sleep issues, may have to give them something to stimulate their appetite. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. may have to put them on a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Again, the biopsychosocial spiritual approach to helping them to deal 
with the root cause of whatever issue they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> is it always that it, it, it stems from that? Do they just come to you just because, hey, I, I know um, that you're a doctor and you deal with mental, I have an issue I need help. Yeah. So yeah, uh, that I've been seeing more of that post COVID nineteen. That's yeah. why I can say this yeah. COVID nineteen pandemic. That's the one blessing I can think of. It's gotten people to realize the importance of their mental yeah. health. So it stems from that. I gave reference to um, you know some colleagues even bringing their coworkers, getting a setting an appointment for them because they notice a change in their mood mm -hmm. or their behavior. Mm -hmm. And again, based on the the history, um, you find out that something's been going on. And I, I'm going to keep saying it because, again, even though it's anecdotal, mm -hmm. um, a lot of issues stem from childhood. Yeah. People are bringing up. I have elderly men. When I say elderly, sit 70, some of them, I don't think anyone ages, but in their 70s, mm -hmm. who would have, been, would have been dealing with issues from their childhood. Either they were, one gentleman was molested um, on one of the family islands, mm -hmm. and he's been dealing with that entire ever, life. his entire life, wow. in and out of rehab because he developed a poly substance use disorder, alcohol, marijuana, cocaine, because that was the root of the problem. Wow. And we're trying to address that with him so that this man can be liberated. Because I think it's so sad, your entire life, yeah. you've been dealing with that one root. And so the childhood experiences, I, I go there. Is there anything in your childhood? And I'd be explicit. Were you ever molested? Were you mm -hmm. ever raped? Did, was your father involved in your life? And mm -hmm. so we talk about any issues that could potentially be the cause of some of the symptoms that they're dealing with. I like the therapy. I love it. So um, for those who may be ashamed, because once again, we do have problems um, with persons who be like, man, I don't, I don't want to go in there. I don't want to walk in there because yeah. I don't want them to think that I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, what can you tell those listeners? Okay. So one of the best ways I can think of, of dealing with that, and I, and I understand it has to do with the confidentiality uh, mm -hmm. issue, um, which is something I'm, I'm very, very, um, I have a firm belief mm -hmm. regarding that. I take that very seriously. Mm -hmm. Let me put it to you that way. So one of the things I would like to see happen is that at least every business entity or every corporation, whether in the government or even in the private, they have a mental health day where you mm -hmm. have someone come to talk to your staff to educate them about mental illnesses. Believe you me, one of the best ways to deal with a lot of the, um, the stereotypical thinking is with education. Once you can educate persons, you find that then afterwards, they're more receptive to getting help and they recognize, yeah, I do have a problem. I do need to get help. And so they're able to get help once they would have been educated. So that way, if we educate our people, People are dying or perishing because of a lack of, knowledge. lack of knowledge. And so we can make people knowledgeable about what's happening in terms of mental illness. They're more receptive to getting the help that they need. You got a beat? You tell that to your manager. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he gave me the luck. I, I'll say it. You want mm -hmm. me to say it tomorrow? I'll do it. Um, <laughs> One day of the year. What, it was you what, asked me. What? <laughs> um, what advice would you give a woman listening right now who may be suffering from anxiety yeah. depression depression yeah best advice is seek help um i don't know persons may say well doc i don't have money you know what so yeah. there are resources within the public system that are available even if you just start there and you can meet with one of our professionals and we can further direct you based on however that conversation goes but do not turn a blind eye to it don't ignore it Mm -hmm. get the help that you need and on the same token if you know someone is struggling with depression be there for them yeah. get them the help that they need be that strong person so that they, they can have the you know the chance to get their lives back to where it ought to be Support. um you don't want to leave an actively suicidal person alone because mm -hmm. that can be the very last time you see them mm -hmm. and being that this is a show about women i go back to 2015 shamika mckinney and she drove over Montague with her two daughters, mm -hmm. ages three and six. I thought when that happened, I said to myself, we failed this young lady. Mm -hmm. When I say we, we as a society, because it was bad enough for her to think that she needed to end her life. But to take her two daughters, she, mm -hmm. she made sure in her thinking, I'm not going to leave them behind to suffer. I probably don't have anyone to leave them with. Yeah, whatever the scenario. But in any event, it was a tragedy. Um, it's so sad that that have to happen. And I want us as a nation to be better aware of it so that we can be able to help our brothers and sisters. You recognize a coworker, 
who is not acting normally. They look down, they look depressed. You've noticed a change in their behavior. Don't ignore it. Pull them aside in a quiet, confidential environment. Ask them, what's going on? Are you okay? You don't seem to be yourself. And in that way, if they're able to open up and share with you, you have a bad idea of what you need to do to be able to get them the help that they need. That's 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 because we didn't go there. Let's let's get some signs and symptoms. Mm-hmm. How can we identify that? Because there's there's a people act differently at home versus yeah. then what they do at church mm-hmm. and then what they do at uh, work or the in the office environment. Um, so how can we tell if someone is going through depression? Okay. Um, so for both depression and anxiety, they're physical, they're emotional, and they're mental symptoms. Mm-hmm. So for example, for depression, then um, there's a mnemonic that I, I tend to use, SIGI caps. So that stands for sleep disturbances. Either mm-hmm. because it's sleeping too much or not sleeping at all. And again, I tend to see people not sleeping mm-hmm. um, when they're depressed. Loss of interest in terms of the things that they used to enjoy doing. Feeling guilty, worthless, or depressed, or hopeless. Mm-hmm. L- decrease energy not being able to concentrate, changes in appetite, either eating too much or not eating at all. Mm-hmm. And again, I, for persons who are depressed, I tend to see people not eating, no appetite. Psychomotor agitation, meaning they're restless, they're fidgety or they're irritable. And then of course, this is suicidality, the suicidal mm-hmm. thoughts or maybe the suicidal attempts, you know, what if you see the marks on their wrists, mm-hmm. just recognize something isn't right. And similarly with anxiety, they're physical, emotional, and mental symptoms. So physically, that person may complain of shortness of breath or tightness in the chest, or they may um, have increased pulse rate. Mm -hmm. Um, Emotionally, they may have this intense fear. They may just start crying for no reason. Mentally, hyperactive. Their mind just keeps going and going and going. They can't stop thinking about whatever it is that they're dealing with. And so again, persons tend to give signals about stuff that they're going through. And if you're able to recognize any change in that person's behavior, any change in their mood, even if it's a male counterpart, you recognize that he's you're out and he's drinking, drink after drink after drink after drink. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's no explanation for it. For example, no birthday celebration or nothing. You recognize, hey buddy, you're really drinking a lot. What's going on? And so recognizing a change in their their behavior, their mood, their personality, that's what you're gonna recognize. And so you'll be able to get that person help. Mm What if people may not, um, you may have someone who may not go through all of those symptoms, mm-hmm. but for mm-hmm. instance, um, you have persons who say, well, I've been feeling depressed because I couldn't find a job, mm-hmm. um, similar to our friend, yeah. who, you, you know, yeah. she'd been knocking on doors, things right. haven't really been working out for her, right. but then she still feels this depression, but it isn't that, oh, she needs to take medication. Mm-hmm. So how do you deal with instances like that? Yeah. So again, I go back to my fundamental biopsychosocial spiritual approach. And I've actually had to, I don't have a social service officer attached to my private clinic, but mm. within the public, I'm so grateful to my social service officer. And I'll give her a bit of a blind. Call her name. Miss Julia Meadows. Hello, She's Julia awesome. Meadows. <laughs> um, Thank you for being so awesome. Um, and um, amazing. I'm the social service officers at yeah. Sandals. I mean, they are, they're very amazing. They go yeah. above and beyond to help. And so even if it's just temporarily being able to provide persons with housing yeah. or point them in the right direction for job opportunities or even meeting with family members to be able to help to bridge whatever gaps, gaps. Mm-hmm. within the family. Mm-hmm. And so I say that to say, if the social service department, I, I really need us to upscale to give people, if it's just temporary help in terms of employment, in terms of job or housing, whatever, a month, two months, be able to give these people a chance to get back on their feet. Yeah. It is going to make a difference because socially, if they're not able to deal with those issues, they are going to relapse. They are yeah. going to be depressed. They are going to turn to substances. Mm-hmm. And so you don't want to leave any gaps in the total treatment that is needed to be able to address these mental health issues. Mm. Let's talk about, since we're talking about women, let's talk about the um, postpartum disorders. <laughs> Okay. You know, I mm-hmm. had a little bit of it. It's a little bit. Yeah. And I think in my own, in my situation, this is years ago. My 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 baby is five now. Um, she wasn't latching. She was not. She was rejecting me. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, I had to give her the formula mm-hmm. that I was like depressed for like two three months. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, and, and it was it was the rejection really yeah. that got me. Yeah. You know. So and then you have persons who just have the depression because they you know they're afraid of what's going or anxiety mm-hmm. because they don't know what's going to happen mm-hmm. they don't know if they can do this mother thing yeah. they don't know if they could survive with all the different financial obligations that 
being a mother has to mm -hmm. offer. Mm -hmm. how, how do we re, um, address this? Yeah. And so one of the best ways that I can address that, especially for someone who is being a mother for the first time or planning to be a mother, is to plan. All right. Um, I wish we could go back to the way things were when my grandmother, where there was a community involvement, oh. everybody was involved, village. even the neighbor, right, a village, because those persons had the help that they needed. Yeah. Um, you know, being a mother, I can only imagine is your first time mother it could be very terrifying and be very nerve wracking mm -hmm. because you don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. And so you want to be able to plan. I think even the Bible talks about that, the older women who are more seasoned mm -hmm. and knowledgeable, being able Teach to impart you, uh, their knowledge mm -hmm. to the young would mm -hmm. be able to provide help for them, mm -hmm. you know, because it's difficult, a mother for the first time, you know, dealing with a baby who's crying all the time or who's colicky, oh, that will get to you. Yes. And so you need a break. You need someone to say, let me keep this baby, for you. if only for a, a half Couple a day hours. so you could sleep, mm -hmm. so you can rest. And so that's important. And so I say, get a, a support system on board. Mm -hmm. If you're part of a church, allow the women in the church to be able to help to assist in you wearing that child because it can be very, very, very difficult mm -hmm. the first time. And Someone so you, talk who you about, can trust. Let me just put that there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Lack of sleep and the husbands, you know, as best as you can. Mm -hmm. I, I think men should be given, you know, you have uh, maternal leave. I think men should be given some paternal leave as I well. I agree. You know, if it's only two months or yeah. a month, that way they can help the mother yeah. with their, their, their newborn baby. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> and some European countries, they do that, <laughs> yeah. you know. Uh, but postpartum psychosis, now that's where it gets really, really concerning. Mm -hmm. So after you've had a baby, you start to feel either suicidal or you start to want to think harm to the baby. You may mm -hmm. start to hear voices, not sleeping, dramatic change in your mood. That, mm -hmm. That's a, an emergency. So you need to get that mother to the hospital right away because it could turn out to be very bad. So you don't mm -hmm. want to ever get it to that point. So recognize persons who are there with that mother, any dramatic change in that young lady's behavior either very severely depressed, um, always crying, crying, not sleeping, hearing voices, feeling, you know. You know, I hid mine. Huh? I hid mine. The two months that I had it, <laughs> I hid it from my husband. Surprisingly, he's my best friend. But I hid it from him because I was ashamed to say, wow. uh, well, I wasn't really, I wouldn't oh, say wow. ashamed, but I didn't know what I was experiencing. Yeah. Um, And I think because I have battled with rejection. Okay basically all my yeah, life yeah. that the fact that something that came from me was also rejecting me. Yeah. Oh shoot. Is this speech therapy time? Is this, is this what you call it? Talk therapy? Yeah, yeah. Let's talk, let's talk, talk. <laughs> <laughs> but I think for me, I just, you know, I, I cried in her nursery, okay, you know, okay. and then I would wipe my eyes, wipe my tears and then go back in the room. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. how, how do we, how do we talk to, I mean, I know how to, but for you, yeah, for you to discuss, yeah. how do we talk to women who want to hide their emotions? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, definitely, I think, again, it's important to recognize it for what it is. Mm -hmm. So if she presents to me saying that, you know what, it's, I'm finding it difficult, you know, I'm, I'm feeling depressed or whatever, that's where the talk therapy comes in. Mm -hmm. Sit down one on one, unload, tell me everything. What are you dealing with? Let's put a plan together to help you to deal with whatever situation. And it would be good too, even for new mothers, if they're given some sort of education, the mothers and the fathers, yeah. some education about any potential postpartum depression prior to it happening. That way, you know, both parties are involved. Real, and yeah. so you know exactly how to deal with it we'll should that. it happen. Yeah, yeah. proper planning. Yes. I have a question. Um, I always wanted to know, what is this? Is this is something to be concerned about, right? when you've had a baby right and this is something that this happened to me and i'm sure it's happened to a lot of other people but you know being meant to be tend to make light of things yeah. where you know this baby is sleeping <laughs> you put the baby down you walked away you're looking at the monitor you can see this baby's asleep okay. the monitor screen goes off you sit down i can hear a baby crying I go to the nursery, the baby's in the exact same position, you know, baby crying. Okay. Is that a normal thing? Okay. So what where your mind for the most part, if I can yeah. say playing tricks on you. Yeah. Right. So usually for something like that, the first question I have to ask, are you getting enough sleep? Because if you're not getting sufficient <laughs> sleep, no. And for us as adults, <laughs> research, seven now? hours. Um, 
Which one? The last one. The... He's four months. Oh, he's yeah. not getting any sleep. Yeah. So if you're not getting <laughs> enough sleep, then that definitely you without that proper sleep, seven hours minimum with each passing day, mm-hmm. chances are you are going to feel in a certain way that, you know, you're hearing things, you're not going to feel your usual self. And so the sleep needs to be addressed. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the first question I have to ask. How are you getting Ooh. enough sleep? <laughs> so, oh man, I don't know if there's anything that you would want to share before we close yeah. some things that we may not have discussed yes. that you want to um, enlighten us on. So, if I can, um, ways in which persons can take care of their mental uh-huh. health. Uh, I'm, I'm a preventative physician. Yeah. I want to prevent things from happening. Mm-hmm. Right? Other than knowing your family history, other than getting your annual physicals, etc. So first thing is exercise. Mm-hmm. All right? We are not made to just sit down and be couch potatoes. Mm-hmm. We're made to be active, active. to move. Mm-hmm. And so based on research, if we can do that five times a week for 30 minutes or three times a week for 50 minutes minimum, or 150 minutes in total, Wrist walking, pumping weights, exercising, yoga, whatever it is, you will be a much better person. It'll help with your, um, you know, any kind of potential mental issues. You'll sleep better, you'll feel better, you'll control your weight better, mm-hmm. cardiovascular support, your lungs will be thankful for it, mm-hmm. so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Exercise, getting sufficient sleep, seven hours minimum for adults. Certainly younger kids need more. Mm-hmm. But if you're not making that quota where you're only getting four hours, repeatedly, continually over time, you need to get that check out. That's yeah. not good for the body. And I think God has a sense of humor because he rested on the seventh day. And place. here we realize now, wow, we work. need seven hours of sleep. Mm-hmm. But those who drink alcohol, men no more than two drinks in a day, women no more than one. Mm-hmm. All right, so whether that's a glass of wine or if it's a beer and a Guinness for men or you know one mixed drink, you know, that's it. Mm-hmm. You do things in moderation, you prevent yourself from developing any kind of um, problematic issues, mm-hmm. and that's mentally or physically. Mm-hmm. Talking to other people when you, you really need to talk to someone. Yeah. Caring for others, extremely beneficial. Yeah. The diet, watching what you eat, I have to hit that because a lot of the foods that we consume is making us more depressed. Yes. It's causing our immune system not to function properly. Best diet in the world is something called the Mediterranean diet based on fatty fish, salmon, and plant-based fruits and vegetables mm-hmm. and nuts. If we can get to that point of eating that at least six days a week, yeah. and then we can eat bad on the seventh day or, yeah. or the first day of the week, which is mm-hmm. Sunday, <laughs> fine. But we'd be better able to control these uh, non-communicable diseases, hypertension, obesity. Your immune system will be better intact. And so treating all of that, putting all of that, living a holistic approach, and last holistic. but not least, mm-hmm. having faith in God ah. brings vitality. If uh, even the atheist has a faith, he believes yeah. that there's no God, and that gives him strength. So mm-hmm. having that faith in God to know that God loves you, He wants the best for you. He has a purpose for you, and so find that purpose and live it before leaving this earth. Too many of us are leaving this this world prematurely. I love that. That's some really good advice. I mean, it's so good. I don't even have to do the talk to the audience moment because he doesn't say everything anyway. Uh, but real quick talk. There was something that I watched yesterday, yesterday before yesterday. It was a short little clip. Um, this lady said that she she could tell that um, she found out that her husband was experiencing anxiety because um, he was snappy mm-hmm. and he had um, his stomach was bloated. Mm-hmm. Is there any truth? Because she's not a, a, a doctor. So yeah. she just was saying, hey, this is, a, and I think she was trying to sell some um, herbal thing mm-hmm. to help to reduce whatever is going on yeah. um, with, with her husband. But talk yeah. about ways that we can tell when our spouses may oh, be going definitely. through anxiety. Oh, gosh. Yeah, forgive me for even not remembering it. So I've, I've been finding amongst men yeah. and that, again, is all the age groups from the, the preteen all the way up to grandpa in the mm-hmm. 70s. Mm-hmm. Um, they may have been brought in by a loved one, you know, a spouse or a, a girlfriend or, or maybe a, 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 a child, mm-hmm. the older person. And they would say to me, Doc, he is so angry. Yeah. Like he's irritable all the time. And when I do a depression screen on the brothers, I find that they score high on depression. Mm-hmm. And so that suggests to me that in our culture, our setting, I would love to be able to do a study to confirm this, that our uh, men, when they're depressed, or maybe if they're dealing with anxiety, that tends to be manifested in terms of anger. And if they're not using substances to kind of deal with it, or even if they are, 
that anger is directed towards the people around them. And mm -hmm. so they recognize that, that something's happening. And so one of my theories is a lot of the violence we see taking place mm -hmm. in terms of our men it being manifested as anger, mm -hmm. they could very well be dealing with depression. And so with anxiety, it's very similar. They're like grace and mercy twins, yeah. anxiety and depression. 50% of persons who have one tend to get the other, 50% mm -hmm. who have the other tend to get the next one. So with that same treatment, the biopsychosocial spiritual approach, and so with the anxiety, yes, that can be manifested physically in terms of, again, people having appetite issues or bloating, mm -hmm. feeling nauseous. Mm -hmm. I tend to see that stomach aches with mm -hmm. our primary school when it comes to anxiety. Yeah. But all the teens and adults, it's headaches. When we rule out everything else, we recognize that, hey, this is a generalized anxiety. And so definitely, and I applaud her for recognizing that because we need more women Awareness. to be aware mm -hmm. of any changes in their spouses or boyfriends or significant others so that they can get the help they need. I love it. Yes. I love it. So, Doc, let us know. Why are we calling you Doc, right? Yeah, that's right. Fine, that's fine. <laughs> Dr. Knows, let us know how we can reach you. I know I read the read, but of course, you can tell me, tell us further how we can get in contact with sure. you. Sure. Should we need to, um, you need to, well, I don't need your service because <laughs> I'm fine. You know, I'm kidding. But for any of us going yes. through any, because you know, life could hit us. Yes, you never know. Definitely. And you may need, you know, your services as far as, because you, you're not only just a physician as far as, you know, right. physical, but also to help with mental disorders. So Absolutely. if someone wants to come and um, seek your services, how can we okay. reach you? Okay. So uh, let's start off with the Sandalins Rehabilitation Center. I may be contacted at 364-9600. That's asked for Dr. Sean Knowles, 364-9600. And I'm typically stationed on the detox the substance use ward. Mm -hmm. And then we have a lignum by the uh, unit or mm -hmm. transitional ward. Mm -hmm. And so the operator can just transfer the call there or contact me mm -hmm. should you want to reach me. Mm -hmm. The other place would be my private um, clinic, uh, Emanuel Medical Center, 393-9355, which is 393-WELL. 393-WELL. I was waiting on you to say that. Um, but that's how you can reach him. Do you have a website? Or uh, we, well, we're on Facebook, so we do have a Facebook uh -huh. site. Emmanuel. Where, Emmanuel Medical Center. Yeah, okay. and people can even send us info, uh, information or questions right. via From the website. Yeah, we yeah. check it on a daily basis. Yeah, so th this information today is just so valuable and it's really much needed um, because, you know, like I said, this all of this came from just one person reaching out to me and just pouring out what's going on with her. And then with me, who, who ain't really used, you know, I'm like, how is that even possible? She's beautiful. She's flawless. Yeah. She got so much going on. How, you know what I mean? Yeah, like it, it, it does not discriminate. Question is no respect of persons. No respect of persons. And, I got and it hits you from any and everywhere. It does. Society, it, it doesn't does. matter. You can have all the money in the world. Yeah. And look at Miss USA 2019 who committed suicide in Robin, January last Robin year. Williams. Robin Williams, Anthony Bourdain. Oh my gosh. Um, who would have ever guessed, right? Yes. And people. these are persons who make who who entertain others. Yeah. They make people laugh. Yeah. You know? Depression is no respect of persons. Oof. Yes. Oof. Yeah. Yes. Yesterday. Mm -hmm. And then last last year, and this is before mm -hmm. I was approved of the show. Last year, was this lady at the hotel on um, West Bay Street mm -hmm. who committed suicide. And in her case, she was saying she was reaching out to people to tell them about her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. But nobody really was paying attention yeah. to her. Wow. You know, and so this is where we all have yeah. to come in. Absolutely. We all have to play a part. I'm not pointing fingers at anyone because yeah. I can, but mm -hmm. I won't. Yeah. Um, but we all have to take matters seriously. Yeah. We all, and this is my talk to the audience woman, I guess I'll just call it talk to the audience woman. We all have to take matters seriously, especially with our loved ones, especially with our colleagues and co workers. Whenever, as Dr. Sean stated, yeah. whenever you find yourself or see someone who has um, a change in their um, um, personality, mm -hmm. in their character, uh, they may seem deflated in yeah. some way, mm -hmm. you know, you just pull them to the side and inquire. Mm -hmm. This thing with child I ain't getting in nobody business. We need to get rid of that because that's a life that you could possibly be saving. Oh, Even if they don't want to speak with you, you can direct them to someone who they can perhaps speak to, yeah. you know, some professional. Um, I love how uh, Dr. Sean state, <laughs> stated also that the, the workplaces should have a mental health day. 
and I'm looking at beats because I'm like, I'm about to bring this up tomorrow. <laughs> uh, but we should have something, even yeah. if it's just bringing someone in. And I love this because he and his colleagues can benefit from this also. And then other um, institutions, especially human resource managers, could find a way to bring persons in at various organizations just yeah. to talk, even if it's just for an hour, even yeah. if it's for one Friday or, you know, um, something something yeah. right something yeah, just yeah. something mm -hmm. so that they could have professional insight on how to deal with matters yeah. that, similar to what we've discussed how do you deal with someone who's lost a loved one they mm -hmm. lost their mother they lost their husband mm -hmm. or whatever and then you wonder why they're acting out in at their workplaces right. you right. know because the the manager or whomever um is not um what's the word they, they're not they're not, um, give me the word, mm -hmm. man. I keep it around. They're not in tune or, that. right, they're not in touch. That's not the word I wanted, but that, that, I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> um, with what's going on right, right. with, um, the employees, right, right. you know? Yeah. So how do we deal with that? Empathetic. Empathetic. That's yeah. the word. Empathy, yeah. Yes. And so empathetic. how do we deal with that? We can bring persons in to help with that, to teach them, to train yeah. them, yeah. you know, and to what to look for. Definitely. You know, um, another thing is, as as Dr. No stated, that you have a proper diet, man. We as Bahamians, you know, and I'm I'm always guilty of this because every time I have a nutritionist on, I always talk about I just lay out all my issues and my peas and rice and my bean and rice and my pork chop and all these different things. Um, but find a way as as the last nutritionist we had here, she said, Hey, just do it in portions, mm -hmm. and I'll never forget this. You know, it's just like a like a a, a clock. You know, and each one has its different, right? Yeah. So you have your little carbs or whatever have mm -hmm. you, you have your meat, and then the other side or the half is just the vegetables, vegetables. Yeah. you know? And I've learned that. In fact, mm -hmm. that's what I did today. I had the bean and rice, I had the pork chop, a little bit of pork chop, and then I had the salad and the corn on the there side. Yes, yeah. so yeah. try it, yeah. try it, yeah. 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 all right? Yeah. Don't mind the size, <laughs> because honestly, um, two years ago, I had issues with my iron. Okay. And then a couple of years before that with um, my cholesterol. Okay. Yeah. So my height and size mm -hmm. means nothing. Yeah. And that's, that taught me a very good lesson, yeah. valuable lesson. That's why that and your physical is important. Yeah. Getting those um, parameters checked. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So be careful and be mindful of your diet. Exercise regularly. Um, be around positive people. Yes. Listen definitely. to positive things. Mm -hmm. You can't have the rugga 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 music and the, and the depression. You know, you just had a heartbeat. For goodness sake, if you had a heartbreak, do not listen to Tony Braxton. <laughs> oh my God. It just don't do it. Don't listen to no sad love songs during the time of any heartbreak or issues like that because it can cause you to get in a depressive state. Definitely. Been there. Yeah. done that okay, <laughs> okay? um experience all right take the time to know god this is important get to know god get to know his word get to know um as as his word is a weapon for those times when anxiety comes yes we don't have to demonize anxiety mm -hmm. and depression but mm -hmm. as i said earlier if god didn't place that in us where did it come from mm -hmm. So just like any form of sickness that you may have, cancer and all Absolutely. these other things, they're not from him, but we know how to build up our faith and develop our faith so that we can, other than because faith without works is dead, so we can use the word of God along with the other medications because yes. he's given us physicians to help us to, to be whole, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So don't neglect, just because you're taking the medications doesn't mean that you neglect the word. No. Use that as ammunition as well. Mm -hmm. um, Cast your anxieties on him. Um, understand that depression wants to silence you. Yes. And I said this at the first, my first show with part one, depression would want, wants to get you in a point where you don't use your voice. Dep depression knows that you are skilled, that you have potential, that you have purpose, and depression will try to keep you silenced. Depression will try to tell you nobody needs to know what's going on right. with you. Right. You know, yeah. and you could suffer alone. Yeah. Don't listen to that yeah. voice. Yeah. Go and seek help. Seek medical help. Don't think that you could do it on your own. Go to your sisters. Go to your brother. Go to your neighbor. Go to your pastor. Go to someone that you can trust, who you can share what's going on. Sometimes talk therapy is what is oh, yeah. needed. And sometimes if in, in, you know, cases where you are, you, you feel as if you can't control it, but to a point where you're having suicidal thoughts, then, of course, you go ahead right away and yeah. seek professional help. Yeah. Um, speak life. 
I believe in in I believe words and yeah. affirmations power. are very powerful. Life and death in the tongue. Life yeah. and death is in the power of the tongue. Yeah. When you wake up each morning, just tell yourself that I am here for a reason. I was created to not only give God glory because that's the ultimate, but to help someone else who is in need. Absolutely. I can be the hands and feet of God. I can be his mouthpiece here on this earth. Somebody needs me. Mm -hmm. Whatever skills and abilities I have within me is somebody else's um, problem that Preach. I can fix. Preach the stuff. There's a reason. Yep. You don't you just come on this earth for nothing. You're yeah. here for a reason. Absolutely. Why would you want to commit suicide? Mm -hmm. Why would you want to, to distance yourself from, isolate yourself from society? Yeah. We need you. Yeah. We need you here. You are yeah. here for a reason. So keep telling yourself. Tell yourself what you want to see yourself, mm -hmm. how you yeah. want to see yourself. Yeah. You may not have the, the finances now. And I notice mm -hmm. with women, especially mothers, we go through situations where we... We get anxiety because we feel as if we can't pay the school fee mm -hmm. or we feel as if we can't put the food on the table mm -hmm. or whatever have you. Just mm -hmm. know that, hey, you can always, um, life would always, what they say, weeping may endure for a night, but joy right. comes in the morning. morning. There's Absolutely. hope somewhere. Yeah. Even if it means getting a couple of cans of tuna yeah. and, and, and a pack of noodles or rice or something and mm -hmm. make it a meal until yeah. you can do better. Yeah. But a meal is a meal until you can do better. Absolutely, yeah. You know, and for yeah. those who believe in God, y'all know that you think he'll ever forsake you? No, I have never. never seen the righteous forsaken, yeah. nor his seed begging bread. Absolutely. Never have yeah. I. Yeah. Sometimes it requires asking, you know. Mm -hmm. You know what is killing you? Pride. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ask. Ask a neighbor. Ask if the church member, ask someone, is it okay that I can have such and such? You don't even have to go through all why to say, Hey, this is um, I need this. Are you able to help me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes or no. Mm -hmm. And who cares what they think of or what they say afterwards? You have the finances that you need at the time yeah. that you ask for to provide for your family. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Friends and well family, said. check up on your loved ones. Be aware and alert. Mm -hmm. Take notice. Life is not about yourself. It's not about you. Go ahead and check up on that person. And like I said on the first show, sometimes it's the loudest one. Sometimes the, it's the one that it, whose star is, is shining the brightest. Yes. Check on absolutely. them. Absolutely. Ask them how they do it. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they strong person. Right. The you strongest person strong. is the leaders. Yeah. I've mm -hmm. seen it. I've experienced it. Mm -hmm. Okay? <laughs> Pay attention. You don't have to battle anxiety. You don't have to. You know, yeah. sometimes it would require, I'm, I'm a life coach as well. So sometimes it would require just talk therapy. Yeah. Sometimes it require better organizational skills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Planning, yeah. structure. Sometimes that's all it needs. Yeah. Sometimes. Now, I ain't saying every time. Right, right, but right, that's right. all it is. Financial planning. You know, to learn how to budget. If you know September is the time, August is the time that you have to pay the school fee. From January, you should be putting a little something on the side. Mm -hmm. You know, Christmas, you want to get something for your children. When are you, are you doing something where you could put a little you know, $10, $5, whatever you have to ensure that your children get what you desire for them to mm -hmm. have. Yeah. Planning. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Woo! That was just juicy right there. You know, for those who may need help with scheduling, planning, organizational um, skills, time management structure, you can go onto my website, www.yourlanelifecoaching.com where I can help you as a coach, I can help you with these areas. You don't have to, to deal with that, you know? And if it's if it's at a point where it's just too severe, if it's if you can't handle it, if you're having um, issues where you need help from a therapist, a help from a psychologist, um, go to Emmanuel. Yeah, there you go. Go to Emmanuel <laughs> Medical Center. Go to Dr. Sean Knowles. And I love the fact that you're not just going to Amy and every type of doctor. You go into a man of faith, yeah. a doctor of faith, a doctor yeah. who can discern, yeah. a doctor who don't, who's not embarrassed or ashamed to share his faith. And that's powerful because it's very rare. Mm -hmm. 
Ja. Oh, glaube ich auch. Ja. I love it. I love it. I enjoyed. I personally, if you all ain't enjoyed that song, y'all, <laughs> I enjoyed today's show. I enjoyed the information that was provided. I enjoyed everything. I enjoyed the fact that he loves dogs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's a person of faith. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank Rose, for being me. a part of us yes. today. Thank Someone you. said, Trish Hanna, this is a very nice show. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Dr. Sean L. Nose shared a wealth of knowledge, which is so valuable. I greatly benefited from all the information shared. Thank you so much. Thank you, too. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you. Listen, this show could not have been possible without... Where are my sponsors? Airborne Freight and Cargo Services, John Shoe Store and Accessories, Family Medicine Center, Your Lane Life Coaching, Bahama Odds and Ends, and Emmanuel Medical Center. So thank you so much once again, Emmanuel Medical Center, for being a part of us and just getting in and tuning in. And, you know, I, I can say we want you next week and the week after and the week after, but I'll just let your conscience be your guy. Um, but thank you so much for being a part of, the, of today's show, sponsor. Um, I want to talk about next week a little, just a little. How much time we have? We just one more minute, right? I get in the look, but I ain't looking at him because I can could, I could feel the look. All right. So next week's show, we will be covering the topic overcoming homosexuality. Right. Where we will have two women who speak, um, who spent the majority of their lives as homosexuals come out to talk to us about how they have been delivered or at least going through it or battling because they feel as if, hey, this is, I can't say 100% that I'm delivered, but I can say that I am working through this process. You know, as I've spoken to both of them, those were some of the things that they shared. Um, we will also have with us Coach Tammy. She is an intimate and relationship coach speaking to us from her platform, Sexually Saved. She will be sharing the spiritual aspects of homosexuality and ways that one who may also be struggling can overcome. And guess what? I personally believe that a lot of persons suffer from depression and anxiety because they're trying to battle homosexuality mm -hmm. as well. What are your thoughts on that? Though? Yeah. I ain't trying to get you out, but then I try to bring you back in. I'm sorry, but <laughs> honestly, that's yeah. one, but two minutes. Yeah. So there is a growing population um, of persons who LGBTQ, um, you know, who identify as such young persons, mm -hmm. um, youth and adolescents, a lot of them um, are unable to come out, obviously, based on our society, religious norms, etc. And so the concern with that is a lot of them do battle depression much more intensely than the general population, yeah. even suicidality, suicidality, the thoughts. A lot are leaving the country. That's my main concern. Mm. They're leaving, moving to Canada or the United States or other countries. Where and so they can be free. Where they can, yeah, for the most part, be free. Um, but at the end of the day, how I look at it is we have a nation to build and we're losing our young people. No, in any kind of way, whether they're leaving the country or they're not getting the help they need in terms of their mental health issues, yeah. it, it is a concern and um, for the nation, at least it should be. And so, yeah, absolutely. And I, I love the fact that you are actually addressing that head uh -huh. on. And I do plan to tune in because it is an important part of what I see. Yeah. Um, our young people, what they're dealing with and not being able to talk to someone about it. Um, and, you know, even though I know from a religious, religious standpoint, we don't accept that the alternative lifestyle i'm more concerned about how that person is treated mm, because if it. you're going to be gossiping about your nephew or talking about them or belittling them i had one dad beat up his son because he found out his son was dealing with um you know homosexual tendencies yeah. that's not the way to go that's no. not love all right now if you call yourself a christian mm. and you think that is what jesus would do i need you to check that yeah. All right, because Come at here. the end of the day, what would Jesus Christ do? Yeah, and he mean. came for all of us. He came for all the sinners. And so at the end of the day, none of us can throw a stone because we've all have fallen short and we have Absolutely. sinned. And so more critically, how you treat that person is what I'm concerned mm -hmm. about. It should be done in love. Even love. if you don't agree, it should be done in love. And yeah. so, yeah, they do battle a lot more. Depression from what I'm seeing, suicidality, leaving the country, anxiety even because of their alternative lifestyle or their tendencies. And then you have ones who um, <clears throat> having issues with their identity. Like they 
they're having the thoughts, but they're not out yet. Right. Yep. So, I, and, and I've heard a lot about that as well. Mm -hmm. It's there and they're fighting it and yes. it's an issue. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about this because, like you said, this is what's happening now. Mm -hmm. Not even just us as Bahamians, mm -hmm. but throughout the Caribbean yeah. itself, especially yeah. Jamaica. Yeah. You know, you can't. What? Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, so that's it's like, what do we do? Mm -hmm. How do we deal with this? Yeah. You know, and of course, next week's show is not to shun. Um, next week's show is not to discriminate no. in any way. All right. I, the, the purpose of next week and the vision and goal is to help those who may be identifying with what these ladies are coming out. They're yeah. boldly coming out yeah. to talk about yeah. what they've been through, how they get to, how they got to that point. How did they even get to say, okay, what, what was it that started this or what initiated this, mm -hmm. you know? And so there are going to be a lot of persons who may identify with that same issue and perhaps get help as to how they can um, deal with the yeah. matter yeah. or overcome the matter, you know, if they feel as if it's a battle yeah. and it shouldn't be the feelings that they're having. So I want Milan and Lottie, I know, but um, <laughs> there's just so much going on awesome. in this head, Kudos. you know, so I'm excited about next week. And so for those who know someone who may be battling or who may feel as if, you know, I'm not certain about my identity or for those who just simply look, I'm, this is who I am. This is how I am. Let me just listen in to see what these, how they're dealing with it. Mm -hmm. I would advise you to tune in next week for that show. It's going to be powerful. I know for a fact. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Sean Knowles for being a My part pleasure. of your lane talk show. Yeah. Thank you for uh, sponsoring the show. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your insight. Thank you just for your transparency. And thank you to Mrs. Knowles. Hmm. Hello. Could you, could you pick her up a little bit, please? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, she's not only my wife, but also the administrator for yes. Emmanuel Medical Center. Yes. So she's definitely a driving force behind who I am as a person. I, I believe that. So I, I believe I, that. I, I thank God for her and for what she's been able to do for me. Thank you, Mrs. Knowles. You've yeah. been a blessing. And the, the short time that we've had, with each other she's very professional very polite mm -hmm. um and may god continue to bless your marriage yes. i'm an advocate for marriage but <laughs> i can tell you i can see that um, <laughs> um bless your union and of course bless your business and for those who are tuning in thank you so much for tuning in with us today thank you so much beats for your patience thank you father same thank you father i've been praying all day thank you so much um those who are on our facebook page for tuning in and for your insight um, Emmanuel Medical Center is the place to go, especially if you're going through mental challenges. I would advise that you go and seek Dr. Knowles right away. All right. But 39, what's the number again? 393 Well. 393 Well. Give yeah. him a call tomorrow. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. And I look forward to seeing you next week, God's willing. I hope you all were educated, empowered, and encouraged today on your lane talk show. Happy Sunday. Uh, do you have anything to say to the Facebook people? Any, any last minute to do? Is anything you thought about the last minute? I thought of uh, anything, anything, whatever you may want to pick up, because we're still we're off radio, uh, but we're on okay Facebook still. Yeah, so any last uh, minute thoughts? Yeah, one one thing. Um, we have a saying within our uh, mental health um, group. You know, suicide is a permanent solution to temporary problems. Mm permanent solution to temporary right, problems. Well, so mm -hmm. I wish, you know, I could have met Shemika McKinney. I keep going back. So I thought I was such a tragedy. Um, I would, that's what I would say to her. You know what? Your problems, whatever you're dealing with, are temporary. Mm -hmm. There's no reason for you to take your life or the life of your children because of it. And so with that, um, there's a solution. I firmly believe that for whatever problem you're dealing with, there is a solution. There's Always a way out. out. All right? We just have to find it. We just have to find that way. And so that you can accomplish whatever your purpose is in life. 
And the uh, church that I visited this morning, Glory Tabernacle, that's what the pastor spoke on. Mm. God's calling on your life and the purpose that he has for your life. Mm -hmm. And you said it very eloquently. All of us have a purpose in life. And it's important that we seek that purpose mm -hmm. from God and live it, accomplish it. And once that is done, then you can lift your hands and say, Father, whenever you're ready for me, take you can take me home. You know, yeah. that is true. And not yeah. only that, um, find find ways to to exert that those thoughts or those energies take it out on paper journal yeah, yeah. you know do something go mm -hmm. running go on the beach yes get some fresh air Definitely. do something to keep you because we all go through things all of us the only the difference yeah. is that we some of us just know how to handle it yeah. some of us know how to praise our way through some of us know how to just blast the music. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also a dancer. So sometimes, oh, I don't mind sharing this. Sometimes when I feel as if I'm overwhelmed, I just play some music, some praise music, and I just start dancing. There you go. Yeah. Um, my kids, now they're at a point now when they see me, they just stand and watch. Like they don't even, <laughs> they don't say, mommy, what are you doing? They already know what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> and some of them will probably go in and join in. Yeah, but yeah. there are ways to do things. Yeah. Don't ever think that, and I have to reiterate, to ask. Mm -hmm. You have not because you ask, ask not. Ask not, yeah. Ask and it shall be given right, to you. Right. So even if you, don't be ashamed. So even if you are at a point where you are financially in a in a rut or you, you feel as if you, you just need a break, mm -hmm. my children are getting on my nerves. Mm -hmm. My children are getting yeah. to me. Can you just call? I Someone, mean, you still yeah. have to be careful now, yeah. mind you. I oh, have yeah, to reiterate definitely. that too. But ask for help. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, you're you're absolutely right. You said a whole mouthful there. Let's do that. Let's yeah. do that, women. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's ask for mm -hmm. help. Let's ask for something um, instead of just keeping it to ourselves. Yeah. yeah. And so I have a lot um, of my clients, um, majority of them women, they journal. I have them journaling mm -hmm. their feelings, and mm -hmm. that helps them. Mm -hmm. A lot of them rely on music for therapy. Mm -hmm. you know, going to the beach, you know, for I do all of that. <laughs> to help them, you know, to be able to get through. Um, mm -hmm. Even just treating themselves if they can to hair and nails, Facial, just something. to get away by pumping themselves. Yeah. So yeah, all of that together is what's going to help you be able to get through life and to be able to enjoy life. Yeah. yeah. Dasa, you have anything to say? No. Oh, I'm good. You good? <laughs> I just remember, um, like when... I remember when I, like, I haven't been working for a while. Institution where I worked had closed. And I'm usually the person that's, like, the go-to person in the family and all of that stuff. And I recall, you know, just feeling, feeling a bit depressed. And I was like, you know what? The rejections are coming in. Um, you see the couple dollars that you had, it's dwindling and, you know, it's like, okay, God, I'm used to being able to provide for myself and being able to see the money's coming in and do these different things. And, and one word, the word on this end, God is saying, trust me, mm -hmm. I have that plan for you. Just trust me, sit and wait, you know, and, but the human side of us of course. is what kicks in the most. And it's like, I can see these things, but I cannot see the promise. So I'm always like, you know, God, whatever. And I started to get to a point where I started to feel anxious. I started to feel fearful. I started to find myself crying a lot. And because I was home um, and I mind you, I had, it wasn't like I wasn't doing stuff. I was volunteer. I, I still volunteer um, to a feeding network and all that type of stuff. So I was busy still doing some, I'm um, doing my master's degree. I'm, I'm also doing um, some other course and I was busy, um, but I felt that I was going into depression. So I reached out because we have this girls group where my sisters and I, my nieces, we are in this group. And I was like, y'all transparent moment, because there are a lot of times we find that we have people in our lives that are close to us but we still don't always tell these people the deep things ah. that are going on in our head so i reached out to them i said you're a transparent moment i feel like i'm battling depression y'all keep me in prayer and everybody kicked in and started praying and started sending words of wisdom and started you know encouraging and i'm like at the end of the day sometimes you will not even see it on somebody you will not even see the symptoms you will just think, oh, she just always, uh, um, Odessa, always there for everybody else, always 
um, moseying along and she busy, she doing a school and she doing this thing and the next thing. But you know, we kind of hide those things with our emotion, our humanness. But it, it's always so good, like you guys um, reiterated to this evening, that we have to reach out. We have to ask if we find ourselves in need. We have to actually tell people that, hey, I'm being transparent. I need help. Reaching out is so, so important. Yeah. But it, it's really sad when, um, you know, a lot of times it's easier said than done. Mm -hmm. And we, we have to not take it for granted that because I was able to, to speak to somebody or to reach out and say something that everybody else can do it. You know, but I mean, it's just so encouraging to, to hear that the message is getting out there so much more now. Um, you go into the schools and you're doing it, you're doing it in your private practice, you're doing it for government, you're doing your service to the country by doing it. And then your community of, of professionals are actually getting together oh, more nice. now and yeah. not necessarily competing against ah. each other, realizing Working that together. it's, yeah, yeah, you know, it's about yeah. time yeah. That, that you actually get together and actually Go out. Go out there yes. and get the word out and Definitely. reach out to some people, you know. Yes, but yes. we Love have it. to have compassion. Yeah. We have to have compassion. Yeah. And until we have compassion to understand exactly what's going on, outside of just getting on your knees and praying, we have to have compassion and get out there, get the word out and, and help. help out. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Wow, well that was good. I love it. I love it. see what anyway, I tell you a story. <laughs> Every, okay, <laughs> I'll leave this one alone. I'll leave this one alone. But should you need someone at Emmanuel <laughs> Medical Center? <laughs> just letting you know, she's pretty good with accounts and stuff. Right, just okay. Mrs. Knowles, just letting you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah all, right. all right, so thank you so much. Once again, thank you to my Facebook audience. God bless you. Until next time, blessings.